Welcome to another episode of What Is Going On in the UC. And today, you know, I got a, some feedback from yesterday's um, episode about how dating is never going to be a part of unification culture. It's obvious that that is the most uh, stressful topic in the entire cosmos. Okay? We know that the fall happened right around that topic, okay? So that's why a lot of the spirit is just going to get churned up. Okay, so today we're going to talk about um, the heart of matching. Did you ever see a heist movie? Yeah, like Ocean's Eleven. In Ocean's Eleven, the guy that was getting hit was Andy Garcia. The crew of 11 people... You know, they had it in their mind to completely go in there and, and steal this guy's stuff. So, let's say they're planning to go take that stuff, right? They already take it. Andy Garcia doesn't realize that his vault has been emptied. And, you know, goes up to um, George Clooney and says, you know what? I realize that you treated me better than anybody else in my life. And I want to give you the Bellagio. I want, I, I want, to, I want to make you manager and, and, and si actually sign over, make you the owner of the Bellagio. Now, if a few hours before this exchange, they had already emptied the vault, how the heck would George Clooney feel? Okay, let that sink in for a little while. Those heist movies are about complete justification for actually stealing, right? And uh, deception, right? We know that the guy that they're stealing from is, is a bigger dirtbag, so then it's okay, right? Well, this is what a lot of people do to the parents of the people that they say they love. We have an entire culture that throws crap on parents in general. So, what I saw last night was um, kids, you know, very ready to make fun of uh, adults, even respected adults, rather than deal with the discomfort that is facing all of us. The discomfort that is facing all of us is that we're all poisoned with satanic self-centered culture, to the point where None of us can take up arms. It seems as though none of us can take up arms against a culture that means to take our kids. You know? And by take our kids, I mean somebody is walking down the street looking at all of our children as a freaking sex partner. And they don't even think about us. We raise those kids. Now, if you were to say, you're a self-centered father, I'd have to say, screw you. Because you don't know what it means to be a parent. You know, and some of you parents would say, well, I want to be my kid's friend. No, you want to capitulate. And you don't want your kid to suffer. But the person that's really making your kid suffer is Satan. And so you're just going to go along. Yo, but I ain't like that. And if you're going to be like that, you know, I'm going to do, do this. I'm going to issue a, you a very strong warning. I'm going to issue you the same warning that God issued Adam and Eve. Do not eat the fruit. On the day you eat the fruit, you'll surely die. And what dies? The greatest love opportunity that you will ever have the chance to experience. You will cut yourself out as if you would like George Clooney taking the money right before Andy Garcia is about to give him the money. Okay? Cut yourself right out of a great story. The essence of the clash is this. You're feeling your autonomy as, as, as single people, as young adults, as adults. You know, you're feeling you, not, not, not just your self-centeredness, but you're feeling that you should participate in this actively. You, you're feeling that they shouldn't disrespect your autonomy, your free will in the matter. And you're totally right. Something in your heart should be appreciating this thing. And, um, you know, 
if you're not there, I mean, parents really got to look at the fact that you're not there and you're not ready, you know? This is not child's play. And uh, we can't pretend that you're ready. There is a place in our development where we realize that surrendering, it makes a lot of sense when the concepts that we might be surrendering into are just awesome. Like love. You know, Jesus laid down his life. He surrendered his life because he thought it was, um, he thought it was worth doing, you know. So, you know, acquisition is not the only way in which love is played out, you know. And, um, you know, sometimes, you know, love is played out in surrender, as within husband and wife. Like, I'll let my wife have her way. So, um, there's this dance of love going on between the matching candidate and their parents. And there is some measure of surrender. Uh, we all have to study this, this, this dance that we're trying to perform, you know. This dance of, of giving our child on the one hand from the parent sphere and from the, 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 the child sphere. Uh, receiving and surrendering into allowing ourselves to be the gift that our parents are giving to another family's daughter or another family's son, you know? Allowing ourselves to be our parents' gift, you know? And, you know, allowing ourselves to receive this other family's daughter as a gift. When a man and a woman are preparing to give their child in marriage, for them, that's their opportunity to give something that they've been working on for 20 something years or more. Parents being able to experience that is the best that God has to offer. And you know, if you don't even, if you're too immature to understand the joy of giving and how intoxicating it is, then you won't get this. But the greatest experience of giving you'll ever have is to give away your child. Now if somebody comes along and takes your child before you even get a chance to do that, then we can never experience that. We can't do that without the cooperation of our children to not fall or to not give themselves away, you know? Um, and believe me, if we didn't have a satanic culture in our face, this wouldn't be a foreign concept.